Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 65 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. And oh shit, uh, the tour is finished. It's finally over. It's done. Every single show in Australia is done. Uh, we started off, we set off to do 14 shows. We ended up doing 16 because we had to add extra shows. Most of the shows sold out. It was uh, a crazy experience. I'm still getting over the high of everything and trying to get back into normal life. I want to thank everybody who came. Just really great. It, it, it was one of those things where I got off stage uh, in Sydney and I wasn't even sad that it was over. You know, I was just like, fuck yeah, I did that. Like all these people were like, oh, are you sad that it's over? Are you going to be sad when it's done? Are you going to cry? And I was like, nah, I'm just really happy with what I've done. Um, and, and all the people that came out. So, you know, thousands of people came out to the shows. I'm very, very happy um, with with how every show went. I was very proud of it. And uh, I want to say thank you to all the people who made the effort to come out, see the shows, get tickets, you know, wait in line to meet me afterwards as well. Like it was a mental fucking experience. Thank you very much. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, and now... Your boy Lou needs a fucking break. <laughs> I've been running around the country for the last two months, um, and I'm just excited to have like a week long break where I just don't do anything. You probably noticed this podcast is a little bit shorter than normal um, because I'm just I just need a break. I wasn't going to do a podcast, but then I was like, ah, you know what? I can fit in a bit of time. That's why it's a little bit late, but it is still Sunday. But um, I've got time to do a short one now. I just landed home yesterday night um and i've basically been sleeping fucking all day just been incredibly tired so i thought i would give you guys a short one and then i'm gonna have a a break for a week i'm not really gonna put out any videos um i've got a video coming out tomorrow um which i really don't want to (laughs) make well i do want to make because it's funny i'm just i'm just i was just like so excited to do nothing and then this massive fucking rebel media uh, hoax came in uh, out of nowhere, and I just had to do it. So I'm gonna get the the video up. It's all I wrote it on the plane, so I'm gonna f- I'm gonna put it up tomorrow, film it and edit it, all that kind of shit. So stay tuned for that. That should be out tomorrow. And then I'm just looking forward to doing fucking nothing. You know what I want to do? I actually want to clean my room. Like how strange for me is that? <laughs> I'm actually excited to to fucking clean up my room because my room right now looks like a bomb shelter, dude. Like it's just. There's shit everywhere because I've just been coming home, putting all my bags on the floor and then falling asleep in the bed and then getting back on a plane the next day. So <laughs> I've just been uh, really half assing my entire life while I've been on this on, on tour. So I'm happy to, to like just do nothing for a bit and catch up uh, on sleep and, and really just get the rest of my life in order. That's what I really want to do. Like... um. I need to I need to figure out my workspace. I want to have like a proper work desk. You know what I mean? Like I need I don't know. My room's really small because I'm still living at home. Um, the plan was to move out after the tour, but we'll see. We'll see how much if if your boy Lou has even broken even on this massive fucking thing. <laughs> how funny would that be? There's there's a strong possibility that I could be fucking homeless. I gotta wait about two weeks while Jazz does all of the numbers. And runs it, so you spent this here, the flight cost this much, you made this much here, you bought this many t-shirts, you fucking did this, you, know, you went to a cafe too much, and, 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 and oh, you owe me $2,000. <laughs> so, I don't know, uh, we, we need to f- figure out all that kind of shit, but I'm, yeah, I just, I just really need a break is what I need so I can get back into it. But I'm very, I'm excited to make videos. You know, I haven't been excited to make videos for a while just because I've been focused so much on, on the live aspect of everything. And I, I do realize I have been slacking off online. Well, not really slacking off. It's just been almost impossible to, to focus on putting out videos. And I did have a lot of videos uh, ready, like a lot of big projects, like ready to drop. Well, they were supposed to be ready to drop while I was on tour, so I wouldn't have to focus on videos, and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be rushing to put videos out. I had an, a- I've got an animated clip coming, but the animator ended up being like, "Oh, I can only finish it in June." I was like, "Yeah, sweet, cool, mate, good on you." So that'll come out in June, and then I got another big sequel to uh, a sketch that I filmed 
but that one, a few scenes need to be reshot. So I did have all these videos planned, but they kind of fell through while I was on tour and I just had to focus on the show. So I really appreciate all of your patience, everyone's patience with me and my videos. I've been, I've been pretty good. I've, I've been better than last tour. Last tour, I, I, w I almost dropped off the face of the planet. This tour, I've, uh, I've managed to stay pretty much every two weeks. The tour vlog has helped a lot with that. Um, the last episode of that is being edited and we're hoping that will drop on Thursday. So while I am going to be taking a break for a whole week, hopefully the content that is in the works will keep coming. Um, so I wanted to talk about the, the, you'll see it in the video that I put out tomorrow, but um, I, I guess if you've been following me, you probably would have seen the Rebel Media hoax that I managed to pull off. Um, while I was in Sydney, before the show, we were, I was just walking around Sydney doing a whole bunch of tourist stuff. So we went to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and I saw this um, journalist holding a Rebel Media microphone talking in this hectic Canadian accent. Hey guys, we're in Sydney, Australia here and we're just uh, being rebellious with Rebel News and, and talking all this fucking shit about politics and Muslims and all that crap and I was like oh I recognize those guys those are like those right-wing Donald Trump freedom of speech guys I see that and then uh, we ended up leaving them alone we went to the bridge I was there with Luke Kidgel when we took some photos had a romantic stroll with my uh, with my <laughs> as we as we always seem to do accidentally be doing romantic shit but then we came back and and we were about to leave and I, I had the idea to just to just get on an interview and fuck with the guy and I was like ah I'll miss my bus, but then I was like, nah, you know what, fuck it, I'll regret it if I don't do it. So we went back, it was about two hours after I saw them, they were just packing up, and I was like, oh good, finally, they're just packing up, uh, so hopefully they've got time for me to ruin their week. <laughs> um, so I, went, I walked up to the guy, and I had about 30 seconds to prepare, because it looked like he was just leaving, and I was like, uh, hey man, are you from Rebel Media? And he goes, hey dude, yeah, we are. Uh, how, how do you uh, recognize, like, do you recognize me or do you recognize the logo on the microphone? Like, he seemed to be like, oh, fuck, I hope it's me. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I had no idea who the guy was. I was like, no, I just recognize the logo on the microphone. He's like, oh, okay, man, well, what's up? And I was like, oh, I just wanted to know why you guys were in Australia. And he was, when I asked him that, he started to get really like, ah, oh, who the fuck is this guy? Um, and then he's like, oh, you know, we're just here being rebellious, which was just, I almost fucking hung myself in front of him. Like the, the dude was 40 and he's like, Hey, rebel meteor, we're being rebellious here in Australia. And I was like, ah, oh, that's fucking cringe. And then, uh, he goes, oh, why did you want to know? And I said, oh, well, you know, I'm on, um, uh, the opposite team to you guys. I'm actually, uh, in Antifa here in Australia. And he freaked the fuck out. Cause I was, I was, I'm about almost twice the size of the guy. Um, and so he freaked out and he was like, Oh, you're not, you're not here to punch me. Are you? And I said, no, 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 I'm not here to do that. I'm not like that. I'm, I'm, I uh, just wanted to talk to you guys. And he, and, and then I saw the wheels slowly turning in his head of, uh, he's in Antifa. I'm in Australia. He seems to be kind and nice. I should interview him for Rebel Media. And then he's like, hey, man, w would you like to do an interview? And I was like, yeah, I can do an interview. And uh, basically, with my 30 seconds of preparation, I just decided to say the dumbest shit I could say and see if he, he would publish it. <laughs> that was the goal. And I just... The way that I did it was I didn't do it too over the top because I was scared if I went like yelly and screamy, he might get a little bit suspicious and then be like, ah, oh, who is this guy? And then maybe Google it or get sus. So I just decided to say really dumb things and let and then let him wreck me. But then every time he wrecked me, I would just amp up and say something even dumber. Um, and then that interview went on for about eight minutes. Uh, and then I felt him getting a little bit suspicious where he's like, hang on, is this guy actually an Antifa? Like I told him that I was a leader of Antifa here in Sydney. Uh, I told him that uh, his organization is racist and any of his black employees have internalized racism, <laughs> which just doesn't make sense. And then uh, I think the dumbest thing that I said was that... Uh, he, he, he made some comment about how Antifa show up to, to riot, to protest, and they riot, and they hurt people. And they said, that's kind of your job. And I said, no, that's not my job. I don't believe in jobs. I'm an anarchist. I also do have a job because you need one in this corrupt system, but I want to bring this system down. Which even I was like, fuck, that's dumb. Well done, bro. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And it came out of my mouth. And that's the one that rolled in. 
Because every other dumb thing I said, you'll see in the video that I put out tomorrow, every other dumb thing I said, he came back with a, with intelligent debate and, <laughs> and rolled me. But when I said that, even he had no idea what to say. He just went, if, <laughs> if you watch it, you'll, it'll be in the video tomorrow. He goes, I'm like, I don't believe in jobs. I'm an anarchist, but I have a job, but I want to bring down the system that is jobs. And he literally goes... Anyway, so I'm asking you another question, Sam, because I told him my name was Sam, and it was just it was just this beautiful moment of I said something so dumb that even this guy who is used to debating morons for his job was like, I can't even comprehend the level of stupidity that that took. So that video, I'm not going to talk about it too much because the video will be up um, tomorrow on my YouTube channel, and I'll break it down what I did and how I did it and the response to it. It's very interesting seeing. Just the, the, what, what really got me is I went out there specifically to be as stupid as possible and every single commenter on the YouTube channel who doesn't know that I'm a comedian l believed it like hook, line and sinker. Like that really says a lot about your organization when if somebody goes, I'm going to go and say the dumbest shit I can think of and then everyone goes, oh, that's Antifa. <laughs> like that really says a lot about your organization. Um... Dude, I had a thought while I was... We were having breakfast yesterday um, before we got to, uh, on the plane. And there was we were in a cafe and there was that normal, regular cafe music playing. You guys know, like, the... And then there's some weird instrument going... And then, like, halfway through... That'll go on for 10 minutes... And at the 11th minute, I don't know, some cunt with a weird instrument will come in and play this eerie tune, like, I don't know, on a, a fucking didgeridoo. And it'll be like, dun 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 Like that fucking weird cafe music that's like background music. I had a thought that all of these cafes play this shit on fucking Spotify. That would mean that th I reckon there's a whole bunch of secret millionaires who just... All they do is they make cafe music. Nobody knows their name. Nobody buys their shitty music. Nobody actually likes it. But they're millionaires because there's fucking 10,000 different cafes that play their album on a loop every day throughout the year. I bet there's just some dude who's just banging on pots and pans and fucking blowing into a didgeridoo, making weird fuck-off music nobody really wants to listen to. And he's just making stacks and stacks of cash because it's he just gets money from Spotify from all the cafes that play it. I you know that's the kind of sh I googled it and I couldn't find anything on it which makes me think that it's definitely true. <laughs> like that's how secret they are that not even Google knows who the fuck they are. I reckon that's a thing, man. All right, anyway, uh, like I said this is going to be a short one so uh, I'm going to get into miscellaneous bit at the end and then I'm going to wrap it up. I got one question today. Um sorry this is a short one but I I, I just really need a break guys. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't going to do a podcast, but I was like, nah, you know what? I've missed too many. I'll just do a short one for them just for my own, just for my own fucking head. But I won't, I will not, even though I'm having a break, I'm not going to miss next week's one because by then the break will be over. So I will have a podcast for you next week, a full length one. But this one, I just need a, I, I just need a break. It's like the first time, it's the first time I've gotten home and I don't have a show the next night or in a few days, or I have to pump out a video in fucking one day in between flights. So um, I just need to have this fucking week. I'm, I'm currently downloading Fallout 4 and it's taking fucking forever because Australia's internet is the worst in the world. It's, dude, we went in the space of like 10 years, we went from number 5 to like number 50 in internet speeds because nobody wants to spend the fucking money to, to fix it. Like, do you understand how much easier my life would be if my internet was, was good? I'm downloading Fallout 4. It has been, it is, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating at all, at all. It has been three days, three fucking days to download 24 gigs. And I am halfway through 12 gigs, right? That's how much I've done in three days. You guys are like, whenever I start uploading a video, you guys start making fun of me for my fucking internet. I'm like video tonight. And everyone's like, where is it? Where is it? Just know. Right? If I'd say I'm uploading a video and then you guys get impatient, just think back to the time when I was downloading Fallout 4 and it took me five fucking days and be like, oh, okay, maybe lose internet is still shit. <laughs> Alright, so let's get into the question here and then I'm going 
to go to sleep. Hey, Nebs, big fan. I hope this can get on miscellaneous bit at the end. I thought I could get your opinion on this. I'm in my final school year, and a few days ago we had a leadership camp which was which was held in the Performing, Performing Arts Center, where we basically had a cult initiation into Year 12 with shitty music, candles, and all and super weird team-building exercises. Ah, oh, yeah, I've done all that shit. That was fucking weird, man, where you had to... You had to fucking stand in a room and pretend like you didn't hate two thirds of every <laughs> of everybody in that fucking room. And all the, and my favorite part of all these team building exercises were all the all the <laughs> international students who barely even speak English yet somehow they're at the top of the class, standing there like confused, being like, "What the fuck does interpretive dance have to do with me absolutely nailing high level calculus?" Like. This shit isn't going to make me a better piano player. And yes, if you were wondering, that was a stereotype. But holy shit, if there, if you know what, I, I reckon the the international student student stereotype is the only one where you can go. It's not racist if it's true because. All of those, you know what, it's not even racist. Those international students are fucking smarter than all of us. All these dumb fucking people being like, oh, the international students, they're coming here and they're, you know, they're doing better than other people with their grades. Like, it's just bullshit. We should reserve, you know, Australian education for Australian kids. Yeah, do you know why all of the international students do better than our kids? Because they work harder. That's just it. Like, it's not like Asians are just born, like, they come out of the womb holding a fucking $200 calculator that they can do fucking trigonomics on, alright? It's because they, they work hard, and they play piano harder than anybody else, like, any other white kid. Like, while a white kid at 16 is out f- ripping dirty Gatorade bongs, they're getting beaten the shit out of them, the shit beat out of them by their parents because they got a fucking A minus instead of an A plus on their calculus test. All right, they work harder than us. They deserve the better grades. All right, what, what am I talking? Okay, I'm reading this. Okay, um, everyone got to have these cringy en- envelopes, and you had to write a note to everybody in the group. There are about twelve groups. Sadly, me and my mates were split up, so we weren't with each other. After a few days of it, most of the people had already written their notes for the people in their group. The teachers recommended us to write notes to our friends on how much we appreciate them and all that sappy shit. Yeah, we did that, and that's when I realized that I didn't actually have any fucking friends in my group, because I got notes like, You're funny. You're nice. Cool guy. Very tall. And I read them, and I was like, these mean nothing. This is like the fucking potato chips of compliments. It's like, yeah, I can eat them, but they're not making me less hungry. This is fucking bullshit. (laughs) I got the McDonald's of compliments, and I was like, okay, nobody in my group fucking likes me. (laughs) Um, All right. Uh... A few of the people from my group thought it would be a good time to write a hate letter to one guy. Don't get me wrong, I don't really like him that much. He's basically the embodiment of Bieber's ego and the looks of a cancer patient. Not a good look if you ask me. Okay, so you guys were given the opportunity to be nice to your close friends, and you seized the opportunity to completely ruin the start of Year 12 for one cunt because you don't like him for a reason that... I haven't read this whole email, but I bet any reason you give me is not going to be good enough. Like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get to the end of this paragraph and be like, yeah, he deserved this. He does look like Justin Bieber. Um, alright. Here we go. This I, I, I'm going to hate this. Alright. Uh, I don't really like him, he looks like a cancer patient. Uh, The note was some pretty hard shit all around. Stuff like, kill yourself, you worthless Bieber wannabe. Nobody actually likes you, please end your life. You know, the typical teenage stuff. Is that typical? (laughs) That is not fucking typical. I don't think, I I was in high school, I was a teenager from fucking 13 to 19, and not once did I get together with a group of eight friends and tell one guy to kill himself anonymously with a handwritten note that was supposed to be filled with compliments? That's not typical teenage stuff. That's you being atypical cunts. <clears throat> Alright. Not to sound cunty, but he is a shitty guy. He kind, of get des- he kind of deserves to get hurt for what he's done. Maybe jump in, bash him up a bit, but not kill him. Oh, okay, so... You still haven't said 
what this guy has done, right? You've said he's a little bit arrogant and he looks like a cancer patient. So in your opinion, that means he should get jumped <laughs> and someone should beat him to an inch of his life. But, you know, fucking put him in hospital, but killing him, that's a little bit too far. Oh, man. I don't know the whole story, so this may be a bit patchy, but... Okay, so this is what he's done, okay, guys? So let's just think about what, what this guy... Okay, so these guys have... Eight people have anonymously told this guy to kill himself, and also this dude seems to think that he should be bashed by a group of people, put him in hospital, right? But don't kill him, right? So so he, sh he should be bashed, and he should be bullied, so that he feels really sad, like he has no mates. And this is why, okay? He was hitting on my friend's girlfriend while he was in a different town for a game. And this guy would send him messages telling him to kill himself, and that his girlfriend is his now, and a whole bunch of degrading shit. His girlfriend wouldn't hook up with another guy anyway, she's not that type of person. They both clearly have a strong dislike for this guy, and I don't know if it's justifiable to write up a hate letter for the guy, but I can kind of see where they're coming from. Okay, so he hit on someone else's girlfriend and was like, haha, I'm hitting on your girlfriend. Alright, yeah, sure. Fucking put the gun in hospital. Yeah, this is so... This is such high school bullshit. Like, kids being like, he deserved it. Ah, oh, whoops, we've got a suicide on our hands. <laughs> now I'm in jail. <laughs> this is so fucking high school shit that's gone too far already. I'm only halfway through the email. Um, blah, blah, blah. I can kind of see where they're coming from. Anyway, the group, the group brainstormed this hate letter and wrote it up from into a note form and slipped it into his envelope. A few of the members freaked out because they didn't think they would follow through with it. Yes, yeah, so you guys are going to get caught. All of those people who freaked out are going to roll on you. They're going to feel guilty and they're going to go, James did it, Sarah did it, Michael broke kill yourself and fucking Benno told him to jump off a cliff, right? You're going to get caught and uh, that's your fault for doing horrible shit in a group. If you're ever in a group, right... Don't ever do horrible shit with them. If you're going to do something mean, if you're going to do something criminal, if you're going to vandalize something, don't do it in a group. Fucking do it by yourself. Because we used to vandalize shit in groups of 10, and you know what? We got caught because somebody rolled. All right? If you're going to do bad shit, do it by yourself. Our group has a favorite teacher. He's an absolute lad, and he got up in the front room and said that there was this girl who couldn't make it for the whole week. So they grabbed her envelope early. The girl opened up the envelope, and majority of it was hate letters. Wait, so you did it to another girl? What? The majority of the envelope was hate letters. The mum obviously rung up the school and told them. This made me want to go up and take the note out of it, since I didn't want them to do it in the first place. Neither did some of the others. I'm known to be one of the most paranoid people in my friend group. I'm the type of guy that panics when my phone reaches 60% power. Okay, so you're the one who's going to roll. <laughs> also one of the most stupid people in my group, if not the most. So I went up and grabbed it out. I haven't told the people who wanted to yet. I don't know if I should or not. Was it my place to grab it out in the first place? Thanks for the help, Nebs. Yeah, dude, you're an idiot. Um, don't tell them that you took it out. Just put it in the bin and fucking wipe your hands clean of the whole thing. That is the best case scenario that could have happened. Because A, all of your mates in that group think they successfully bullied this cunt. B, this cunt actually isn't getting bullied. And C, you're not going to get in trouble because nobody's going to roll because the note never got delivered. Alright, so just let everybody think they bullied the guy and he didn't care. That's all you're going to do. Because you saw what happened to the girl who got the hate letters. Her mum called the school and, I, and fucking everybody who wrote that letter is going to get in trouble. You should just throw that letter in the bin and never speak about it ever again and never do something like that again because people fuck it. It sounds silly, but people kill themselves over that shit. And, and you know, I'm all for fucking trolling and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes from somebody that you obviously know, like, an anon like, like they're in your year level and it's very clear that 12 people have written you a note that says kill yourself, some people actually think about doing that stuff. And yeah, it's a little bit pedantic, but you know what? It's just not the risk, worth the risk. If you're going to do something bad, at least do it to the fucking news, and then that'll be funny. <laughs> you don't need it to do it. You don't need to do it to your fucking school, mate. You get nothing out of that. It's just being a cunt for no reason. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So, 
you did the right thing, man. You did the wrong thing, but then you fixed it by doing the right thing. Don't tell anybody about that. You've, you've really lucked out here. No one's going to get caught, and this kid isn't going to get bullied. And so what if he's, a bit of, if he's a bit of a douche? He'll get his later in life. You don't have to fucking do that. Um, and yeah, that's the end of the podcast, guys. I know it was a short one, but uh, I, just need, I just need a break, and then I'll come back. I'm, for, the, for the first time in, in, in like a month, I'm really excited to get back into videos. I've got some bangers planned. I've come out, I'm coming out with a new series that's going to be taking the piss out of politics and media, which I'm very excited about. Lure Review will still be running. I'm not going to stop that. Um, it's just going to get better. So yeah, i got a whole bunch of things planned for the future. I'll be back next Sunday with a new podcast, and uh, all my stuff is going to get bigger. I'm going to upgrade gear. Um, I've been saving a lot of Patreon money, and I'm going to be putting it into a big investment into gear. I'm going to get a new camera, a new lens, new lights, uh, a new set. Um, I'm going to buy a new microphone. I've got a whole bunch of shit that I want to buy. Um, speaking of, I would like a bit of advice from anybody who knows cameras. I am going to buy a full-frame camera. The reason is... The camera that I have now is a 600D, and it works well, but the, the crop sensor means that I can't fit multiple people in shot. And because I'm so fucking tall, and most people are really small, I need a much wider uh, sensor, and I need a much bigger field of view, right? So I'm upgrading to a full-frame camera. I'm set on that. Now, what I don't know what I should do is either if I should buy a Canon 6D, which is the entry-level full-frame camera, or I should go for the Canon 5D, Mark III, not IV. Um, the 5D Mark III is $1,000 more expensive, um, <laughs> but I do realize that it could be worth the investment, but I'm thinking that it might be overkill. Like, I'm literally just filming on it. I'm not taking photos. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just filming YouTube videos. So please let me know if you know cameras, whether or not, whether I should get the Canon 6D or the 5D. I'm not going to be doing anything fancy with it. I just want it to look the best that it can look. That's really it. I just want it to look the best that it can. Um, and if the 5D Mark III isn't a huge step up from the Canon 6D, I'm not fussed, right? So anybody who knows cameras, uh, Canon 6D or Canon 5D. Like, is, is there that much benefit in the 5D? that I should spend a thousand dollars more on it because I don't want to waste my money buying all of these super fancy features that I'm not even gonna, even going to use, right? Because I'm just using it as I would be using it with my fucking camera, filming on YouTube from my bedroom, a little bit of public sketch stuff. So yeah, let me know, Canon 6D or 5D. I will be back next Sunday with a full length podcast. I'm looking forward to it. I've got some big shit planned and I will see you next Sunday. Have a shit one.